Hello and welcome! Today in this Lightroom tutorial I'm gonna take this pretty bad raw file and I'm gonna turn it into a picture like this while explaining to you every step I do. So this really is not the regular tutorial and this picture certainly isn't a great picture regardless. It's definitely just a snapshot, it's underexposed, it, there's a lot of contrast, the sun is overexposed, everything else is pretty much underexposed. And if you're gonna shoot a scene like this, you definitely wanna make sure that you use HDR. And of course, if you sh prepare your shoot and your picture very carefully, you will always end up with a better picture than just taking a snapshot like this and then editing it. But the whole point of this tutorial is to show you that you can actually take such a bad RAW file and still merge it into a pretty decent looking picture with actually pretty decent quality. So first thing you will notice it's way too dark, especially the shadow part. So I'm just gonna erase the shadows and it already looks a lot better than before. It's still a little dark, so let's actually bring down the overall exposure. We really introduce a lot of noise that way, but there's really no going around that. It's definitely a better trade-off to get a little bit of noise rather than a very underexposed picture. So that already looks pretty good. Let's go to the highlights and bring them down. Down. You don't want to make this too much in this picture because the sun really is overexposed and if you bring it down a hundred it's just gonna look completely fake and unnatural but just bringing it down a little bit helps. Then my regular stuff is just bringing up the whites while holding down the old key and making sure that nothing clips, everything that is black is not clipped and everything that is not black is clipped. So you want to make sure that you stop before any color shows up. So that looks pretty good. Now blacks, I usually like to bring down the blacks. However, in this picture, I really think we need to bring up the blacks even more because there's really so little shadow detail. So that looks actually pretty okay. Let's go to contrast slider here. And here I think I'm gonna add some contrast. Now color temperature is pretty difficult in this shot. I think it's almost a bit too warm, so let me bring that down actually quite a lot. I still want to keep a little bit of that warm mood, but I definitely don't want to make it too much. So I'm just going to bring it down to maybe 4300. Works pretty good here. Then tint, I often like to add a little bit of magenta, especially in my sunsets. So I'm just gonna add a little about plus 10 here. And clarity down here. Now clarity is definitely a way you can go both ways here. Don't be afraid to go minus. But for this picture, I really think a little bit of plus clarity works pretty well. Then vibrance and saturation, if you want to change any of these, I definitely suggest you to change the vibrance because it adds color way more subtle. So for this photo, I think I'm gonna actually add a little bit of vibrance. Then let's go down to tonal curve. Usually I always bring up the highlight slider down here. It really is completely different to the highlight slider in the basics adjustment but because there's really no bright parts except for the sun right here, I'm actually not gonna bring that up. I'm just gonna play around with the rest of the sliders. That works pretty good. I mean, I'm not too worried about clipping anything here just because this really isn't a picture where you can be too choosy. It's really not that great of a picture. But I think that looks pretty good. Here would be before the tonal curve adjustments and here after. Just looks a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more alive. HSL tool, really, I'm not gonna change anything there for this picture. But split toning, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of color, especially in the highlights. Let me just see what color I want to add. I think I'm gonna go into the orangey warm tones. Let me just see, maybe I'm just gonna go with some nice yellow, let's just see the other colors. Yeah, I definitely think I'm either gonna add somewhat of a pinkish color or somewhat of a yellowish color. I actually think I like yellow a little bit better here. So I wanna make sure that I fine tune this color. I really don't wanna go too much into the reds. 
rather a little bit more yellows that looks pretty good and then of course just bring down my saturation to where it doesn't look over edited around 45 50 works pretty well and shadows down here now shadows are actually I often don't even add any shadows just because it sometimes is too much once you've already added highlights but let's see maybe I want to add a little bit of purplish color in the shadows just a tiny bit around 5% so I think we're done with split toning here with be before and here's after. Just kind of emphasizing this sunset mood, the sunset color, and making everything a little bit more vibrant and interesting. Now detail tool, definitely gotta zoom in one to one if you wanna work here. And as you can see, it's just filled with noise, a ton of noise, because we've raised the shadows, we've raised the blacks, and we've even raised the exposure. So you're automatically gonna get some some noise but we're actually gonna be able to fix that pretty good now it's definitely gonna lose some of its overall detail uh, compared to when you would for example shoot HDR or use ex exposure blending but I still think it's a better trade-off than just leave it like that so first thing definitely bringing up the color slider 100 here and it gets rid of most of the purple and green sensor noise here is at default 25 and here's at 100. Looks a lot cleaner already, but even though I don't like the noise reduction slider, I have to absolutely add some noise reduction here. It's really, really way too grainy and way too noisy. So I'm gonna raise that quite a bit and it gets rid of a lot of the texture, but as well as of a lot of the noise. So because we've uh, added so much noise reduction here, I definitely wanna add some sharpening to at least make these corners and these edges of everything a little bit sharper. So I'm gonna add quite a lot of sharpening here, around 80, then zoom back out again and bring the masking slider to the right to make sure that we have a nice sharpening mask. So here is before the detail adjustments tool and here's after, especially if we're gonna zoom in one to one here, you're gonna see how much cleaner it looks after. Then lens corrections and the other stuff down here, let me just quickly go over them. Just gonna choose my lens here and enable profile corrections and just go to color and remove chromatic aberration. I really don't wanna fine tune too much here because this really isn't a picture where I want to invest like 30, 40 minutes of editing. I really just want to make it overall look a lot better. So effects, uh, let me just see if I want to add any vignetting. And I think vignetting actually works quite well. And actually the camera calibration tool, I'm just going to leave that out. Just because it doesn't have the biggest impact. And I think for this kind of picture, it really isn't super necessary. As you can see, we definitely have a very big lens flare right here, and you could remove that with the spot removal tool, at least kind of, but it's kind of a big spot and there's shadows and a very complex lighting on the floor, so I think it's gonna be very difficult to get rid of that, so I'm actually just gonna leave that in. Oh well, it doesn't look too bad. Then what I much rather want to do is go to the graduated filter here and just bring up the exposure and just drag it over the foreground. So I make the foreground even brighter because it really was a bit too dark in the foreground right here. It kind of is a bit too much plus exposure but just something like that works pretty good. And then I'm gonna add some plus clarity just for the foreground. I really just want the foreground to be a, a lot of clarity in it. So you really get the transformation from the very sharp and crisp foreground to the kind of hazy background. So I think that works pretty well, but then I'm also gonna add another graduated filter and this time go minus exposure and just drag one over the very, very bottom portion of this image right here. And what this will do is just close out the picture and I definitely like that. And I'm also gonna do the same thing, just closing out the top right here. So here would be before any graduated filters 
and here would be after. Definitely looks a little bit more interesting. Then I think the whole picture is a little bit cropped, a little bit cricket, so I'm just gonna crop that a bit more straight. And I think that looks a bit better. And I think the last thing I'm gonna do for this picture is just grab a radial filter and just add some dodge and burning for the entire picture. So I've added some dodge and burning here, here's before, here's after. It really just created some more interest, some more complexity in the lighting. Once again, before and after. Now I think I'm done with this picture here. Actually, never mind, let me zoom in one to one here and just go to this lantern and just add another rail filter right here, feather to a hundred and inverting the mask and actually just go plus exposure by about well, uh, about three and a half stops here and then I want to make sure that I resize the filter so it looks pretty good now this is a little trick of mine to kind of create some more interest in a picture uh, just by turning on some lanterns and then I'm also gonna put in some warm light right here so let's zoom back out again and I think I may have made the filter a little bit too big right here and I've also added a little bit too much exposure so let me just fix that real quick and I think it looks pretty decent now let's go from the starting point right here here is the raw file without any editing and I mean it's definitely a world of difference but at the end if you shoot a bad picture you're definitely gonna be able to get a better picture but that better picture is still gonna look pretty bad so this picture whether it's edited or not I mean it's definitely not something I would put online or definitely not pr put on my wall but the main point of this tutorial is to show you what you can do with a raw file and what the capabilities of both Lightroom and a raw file even of such an inexpensive of camera such as in Canon 600D is capable of. Actually I think I might have even added a little bit too much exposure so let me just bring that down a little bit and then I'm also gonna grab yet another graduated filter and just drag it over the right portion right here to the right of these trees and just drop down the exposure so we at least get kind of a sense of depth and while I'm speaking of it, I really think I went over the top with the dodge and burning on this house. So let me bring that down as well. And I think that is a better version of this picture. If you've enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, kind of more natural and a little bit better pictures that I edit in Lightroom from start to finish, be sure to subscribe. I upload one photography related video every single day of the week. And if you would like to see me take more really bad raw file and just turning them into the best possible looking picture then be sure to leave me a like or a dislike if you would not like to see it. Thank you as always very much for watching and I want to wish you a great day.